on social media, and there are all sorts of uh, positive memes going around the place at times, uh, or at least I get sent them. Um, and one such uh, idea that, that I came across recently uh, was just, it just, you know, it's one of those kind of, one of those inspirational quotes from someone important. Uh, but it's, it, was, it was the, the, the idea, the phrase, that today is the first day of the rest of your life. And I was like, yes, that's it. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. And you, you, you hear that and you go, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. But I think that, that, that it kind of struck a chord with me to put in motion today what I want to achieve or what I want to be, what I want to get to in the future. You know, like uh, my, my options in the future will be determined by the choices I make today. Uh, if I waste today, if I don't do, if I'm not responsible today, maybe I won't get employed tomorrow. If I don't do my study today, maybe I'll fail the exam tomorrow, you know. So what I do today, I'm investing in my future. I make good decisions today. I, I, I do the best I can with the limited resources, limited ability that I have today. Uh, then things will go much better in the future. And that's, that's from a purely human perspective but also in the realm of faith, in the realm of, 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 of spirituality, the realm of, of our, our relationship with the Lord. What I do today in my faith, with my relationship with Jesus, is investing in, in that relationship tomorrow and how it's going to be the day after and the day after that. And so if I starve that relationship today, then it's going to be that bit weaker tomorrow. And if I starve it for a whole month, it's going to be that bit weaker in five weeks' time. Whereas... All I have is today. And if I, if I, live, if I live my faith, but if I live my relationship with the Lord in that, in that perspective, you know, that kind of attitude, all I have is today. Use it. Use it well. Use it to the best of your ability. Don't waste it feeling sorry for yourself. Don't waste it watching TV or movies. Don't waste it on the internet. Uh, use it as best as you can. Finish your day tired because you've been serving. Finish your day uh, knowing that you've, you've, you've done the absolute best you could with those 24 hours that you were given, or maybe the 12-ish hours of conscious... Well, no, no, who sleeps 12 hours? Oh, yeah, some of our community members sleep 12 hours. Uh, some, of the, some of them are still sleeping 12 hours. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the 12, 15, whatever it is, 15, 16 hours of consciousness that you have, what am I going to do with those? What am I going to do with those? Just when I was reading the, today's readings, it's entirely unrelated. I'll try and tie it in somehow. But uh, I, the, the, what struck me was, I just want to be a saint. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that because I am one, because I'm really not. Uh, but, but I just said, like, that's just what I want to be. You know, that's, that's the goal I have. And now maybe it's, it's as realistic as me wanting to be an astronaut, but uh, that's the goal. I want to be a saint. Okay, so what do you have to do today? What do I have to, what does Father Patrick have to do today to be a saint? And I thought, well, okay, there's a few things I could do. Right, so I've, I've those planned for today anyway, in, in, in my own head. Hopefully it'll work out. But that's because today is all I have. But the ultimate goal is, I'm, I'm, not only do I want to be a saint, which is nice, I'm also called by God to be a saint. And that is, this is something I have to do. <laughs> this is, should be my life's work, right? To become a saint. This is, this, this is my divine calling. And while this is good for me, it's also good for, for those around me, as is sanctity in anyone, in any family. If your mother, father, brother, sister decides they, they're going to be a saint and, then, and lives accordingly, that has effects on, on everyone around them. So we, we, we affect each other. And that effect can be positive, that effect can also be very negative. So we... I think on this, on this Saturday, as we approach now Ascension Sunday, and then as we're preparing for Pentecost, I think it's so, so important that uh, we're preparing again for this effusion of the Holy Spirit upon us, and to remember what that was like for the apostles, how it transformed them, and to ask for those same graces. Lord, I want to be transformed. I want to be a saint, and I'm nowhere near it, and I'm not good enough. I'll try, but obviously without your grace, I can't do anything. I have to do my part, though. Your grace is always sufficient. My, my effort is, is a bit fickle. Your grace is always enough. I want to do my bit today. And then tomorrow, I'll decide for tomorrow. But I want to be a saint. I want to get there. When 
Jesus tells a parable of the sower. And it's a very, very simple idea. Jesus is great at simplifying really complicated things, as, as all good teachers are. The kingdom of God is like this. This is Mark chapter 4, 26. A man scatters seed upon the earth. Whether he is asleep or awake, be it day or night, the seed sprouts and grows. How? He does not know. I love that. This, 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 so like the sower has to do his work. He has to, does, they've been reclaiming a, a field up the hill behind us here and they've put in incredible work into it. They, 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 they planted kale. Kale is really good for the soil and the cows love it as well. So then the cows were out there eating the kale and they were churning up the soil and doing their business as well, which also helps the soil. And uh, then they, they, they plowed it all, tilled it all, put lime on it all, seeded it all with grass seed and then rolled it. It's like a golf course. It's, it's going to be beautiful in a couple of weeks. Okay. So it, I think they pass over the, the same field seven times, I counted, when they, were, when they were tilling it and spreading manure and fertilizer and everything on it. Now, they can pat themselves on the back and say they've done a good job, which they have, which they have. But from two weeks on, they have zero control of what happens. The seed has been planted. Now they step back. Let nature do its thing. They have no control over what happens now. Weather, sun, warmth, and the seed sprouting, that's out of their control. So I think in so many things in our lives, uh, also for us as missionaries, also for us in, in, in the church, and maybe for parents as well, to a degree, we invest a lot of time, effort, uh, thought, Planning, meetings, Zooms, all these kind of things. So much, so, so, so much planning and thing going on. But ultimately, if we're going to follow the Lord and if we're going to become saints, we must let go of the outcome. I do what I can. I do what I'm called to do. But I let go of the outcome because the outcome might not be what I expect or when I expect or how I expect. And if I'm too focused on the outcome, then I'm going to be too focused on statistics, numbers, you know. And then the danger of focusing too much on numbers is, well, if you drop the standard or have a kind of a, you know, free pizza and Coke, you can fill a church. You know, give a free beer to everyone who attends Mass, I guarantee you, you'll fill your church. Uh, but is that, is that what it's about? So to do what we're called to do as people aspiring to be saints and let go of the outcome. Let go of the Leave that to the Lord. Because it may be that your call, your vocation today, is to do the hard work of uprooting the soil. Or maybe even digging out the tree stumps beforehand. Digging out the stones. And then plowing. And that's your part done. What fruit have you seen? Nothing. Your job was uprooting tree stumps and plowing. And pulling out rocks. Back breaking stuff and you see zero fruit. Next guy comes along, he only has to till it. Till it, it's still, it's still hard enough work, right? Till the soil, make it all nice and flat and break up the lumps. Okay, next guy comes and seeds. And maybe he's there for the harvest, maybe he's not. This is what he had to do. It's not, it's not hard. That's, well, it's actually more that way. Sowing seed, okay, there we go. That's all he had to do. The, guy, the other guy was digging up tree stumps with his bare hands, right? This guy goes... Right. I feel like Michael McIntyre over here. <laughs> so, that's, all, that's all he has to do. And then in a couple of weeks, voila, crop, which he did nothing for. Now he can be patting himself on the back, I am the best farmer in the world. And you've got the, his great granddad like, who dug out the tree stumps, you know, going, well, no, I'm glad to see this day. Now, maybe, and maybe he'll never see that day. But that sanctity, is it not? That we do what, we do, what we're called to do, when we're called to do it, and let go of the outcome. Let go of the outcome. Leave that, to, leave that to the good Lord to arrange. It also keeps us, keeps us humble, because it's not about us. So we ask the Lord today to renew in us this desire for sanctity. St. Faustina spoke to Jesus and complained. We don't know exactly what she was complaining of, but she had fallen short of the mark in some way, so she had committed some sin. She doesn't say what it was. I can't imagine it was anything very serious, but... She, she complains to the Lord that, she said, I just, you know, I've fallen short. I, I, I want to be a saint, okay? And the Lord says to her, 
Your desire to become a saint is extremely pleasing to me. Be careful that you do not miss any of the opportunities that I give you during your day. Be careful that you do not miss any of the opportunities that I give you during your day for your sanctification. Okay? So, if you want to grow in patience, what opportunities are going to be given to you? Situations that drive you crazy. Right? That's situations that try your patience. That's how you grow in patience. You know, how do you grow in humility? Oh, this one, this one's tough. This one's tough. <laughs> okay. You grow in humility through humiliations. That's how you grow in humility. So you do you try something and you get it wrong. You do something and no one notices. No one thanks you. And so you just have to say, Lord, all for you. It's okay. I did it for you. I did it out of love for you. I served. It's, it's tough. It's a good school. Not easy. Not easy. So the Lord continues. So, your desire to become a saint is extremely pleasing to me. Be careful that you do not miss any of the opportunities that my providence gives you, that I give you. If you do, so if you miss one of these opportunities, it's, it, this, this, this almost sounds incredible, it almost sounds wrong, not that we would want to correct Jesus, but it almost sounds too far. He says, if you miss one of these opportunities, come to me in humility. Because a soul that returns to me in humility gains more than it lost by sinning. A soul that returns to me in humility gains more than it lost by sinning. I just find that so, so consoling. It's absolutely incredible that that... See, if you're, if you're trying, I'm trying and I fall short of the mark somehow. Something, a moment of weakness or a lapse of concentration or whatever it was. And then I returned to the Lord with humility and said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. In humi- and you mean it, like, with your heart. That in that moment you can gain more than you lost by your fall. So the Lord is the great teacher. And his goal in teaching us isn't to just get us to pass an exam. What he's aiming us towards, what he's trying to get us to, is sanctity, i.e. holiness, i.e. heaven. So today, we will be given opportunities. Each one of you, wherever you are, if you're watching, if you're in the chapel here, all of us will be given opportunities that will sanctify us. And if we're attentive, we might even notice that those opportunities are tailor-made for the virtues that we need to grow in. So if you need to grow in humility, watch out. (laughs) If you need to grow in, in service, someone's going to say, oh yeah, can I have a bit of help here in the kitchen? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunities to grow in grace, to grow in holiness this day. Amen.